We got scammed on eBay. One day I can have loads of money in the bank, the next thing I'm 40k in debt. So in the end, I've got all these customer monies who have paid me up front, $272,000 in a hole to some guy who goes MIA in Turkey. Nearly bankrupt, man. It was like by a skin in my teeth, two months. Can't just give up because you're taking a couple losses, you know? Being a, a little bit bigger than everyone else, they, they automatically sort of categorize you into a contact sport. Cash it's all collapsing, bro. Cash is going, man. It's going. It is, yeah. It's not good because in a minute... Control. Yeah, more control. And in a minute, like if you want to buy something privately, what, what you are you going to do? You know, they know everything you bought and they could just type in who's bought this today and it'll bring up a list of everyone. Before, they'd have to go to each shop, each card permit check processor. Receipts, check yeah, the check receipts, check but the cameras. But I guess yeah. that's where crypto comes into it, I guess, because literally it says it on the tin, it's cryptic of how people are purchasing stuff. So Yeah, I think I think everyone should have a bit of crypto in it just for like, I know obviously some people have... Uh, <laughs> Stop buying says crypto. a crypto master. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'm out of it, man. I said yeah, shit earlier. Like, it just fries my head. I just can't get yeah, my head Just keep it as that. That's the best way yeah, to be. No, nah, but it just, trust me. It just goes back to what you're saying, though. Like, you just because something went a certain way, you can't give up nah, on it. Like, course, everything can't, comes can't, up and yeah, down. Well, down. Like, everything you, goes up and down. You've done, you some, you done some mad X's on VRA. And how much you turn, like, what? So, four into 40 or something? Yeah, I put a grand into it. I think I had about 37 grand within 28 days wow. but if I just left that 36 grand in there yeah I probably would be I, I, I probably would be a multi-millionaire now I would be, yeah I would have been yeah I'd done yeah. some mad exits I, was listening <laughs> to shiz every day I don't even I know what I was doing message you every single day I put six quid in and I had 36 quid at the end of the week and I was like this is the one but then it flipped on the set and I had like two pound left I was like, it's just too much stress <laughs> you see, see, see with crypto I got to the point it made me start saying in the end you just got to look up in the sky and just yeah. laugh yeah, you cry. Like, it's it's mad. <laughs> Trust me. Dude. You know what? You just gotta take profits though. See, like, like yeah, you can't take thirty six quid, four to forty. No, like, what did, are you I thinking? Did. Not taking <laughs> no, did, out your it. initial <laughs> investment. You know what I mean? I, I had a, I had a January last year or the January before. I had a touch. I made thirty five grand in January, and then in the summer, I think I lost forty or forty. Yeah, I, I had a similar. So I had, I had a wallet. Sounds it was a worth about. Yeah. I had a wallet. It's like fifty five k. Now, if I look at it, it's about 3K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everyone's like 90% down. At yeah, one coin, they've got everything's 90% down, but it'll build back nah, up. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's time, it's time to top up now at 90% below. Yeah. Obviously, you know it's going to 10x again. Certain things but you can buy. See, the thing with crypto, you do need a financial advisor. That is the thing with it. No, not, no one really, uh, not a lot of it people shows. know what they're doing. You do need a financial <laughs> advisor. Listen, I sent you, I looked at my messages earlier. The last thing I sent you is you need to start to pay and make people pay you to yeah, give you, advice. you just want to run the wallet not yeah but do you know what it advice. is it just takes so much time you're chatting to everyone and see yeah i could be a financial advisor but you've got a stomach because yeah you go to someone like james yeah the guy and it's promising you what 12 percent or something and yeah, that's yeah. like that's a really good like financial yeah, advisor 12 no, percent you, you want to be like a mine will be that's, like that's incredible mine's like thirty six thousand percent, but you might lose like a hundred percent before you get there you, <laughs> you know don't be I mean? like that guy in turkey <laughs> <laughs> everyone will be looking yeah, for you yeah. <laughs> my, my profile is up and down like btc so like you wonder you might be half but you could like five 5x 10x yeah, overnight no, you're right, you're right. but all of my like safe investments they're all down <laughs> so, like, there ain't no safe no, there's there nothing just safe a little anymore. bit less yeah, 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 like, it, yeah, it's a down 10% you, didn't your financial advisor say to you like last year he couldn't make any money like the guy was making 12% every year now he made nothing yeah, yeah made nothing, nothing was safe and it's I think gold. it was that, no commodity like no like, br like sorry like blanket commodity so maybe the specific commodity but like if he was talking about sectors he's like none of my se none of his sectors performed yeah, oh, that's crazy. Well, everyone's going back to Planet Safe now. Everyone's saying buy silver, buy gold. Buy silver, and stuff, buy gold. But yeah, everything's getting yeah, digitalized. And now gold. So. No, but gold's that's gonna crash in a minute. Scared. That's what I mean. Everyone yeah, gold, just gets yeah. scared and says gold. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. everyone's just pumping right now. Yeah. And that CBDC stuff dodgy as well because you know we we're talking about Chat GBT earlier. Like you can have an agenda. Like it won't make a joke about Biden, but it'll make a joke about Trump. Is they could say like, right, let's take America for example. Yeah, we don't want them to start buying any more guns. And like the controls are coming in. Like they could just turn off the CBDC. You know, just like that, and they control or like. Say you had someone that wasn't politically doing everything they needed to do in the UK, they could just start like limiting, like, ah, you can just buy food, you just buy the basics, you know? And you know, we talked about the 15 minute cities, like you've got Oxford where they're gonna yeah. start making it so you can't leave your borough. They could also like block your card outside of your borough, you what know? What do you mean you can't leave your borough? So you explain it. Ox so. Oxford, they're chopping it up to like four or five sectors, yeah? And they're going to make sure you've got enough shops within a 15 minute walk or whatever, 15 minute drive, whatever. Yeah. And if you leave that 15 minute zone, you get a fine or whatever. So they're trying what? to make it. It was just reduce... everyday life. Yeah, everyday life. They're trying what, to this is this is pollution. actually happening. It's happening. Yeah, the trial is happening in Oxford. Yeah, that's so you've crazy. got 15 minutes. You're allowed to leave that area, or whatever. After that, you get fined, and that's just to reduce pollution. Yeah, yeah they've been protesting, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. And they've been doing some good protests. Like the people who are on it are like real on it. They're like, getting their points off real good. But like they know that this ends bad. You know, yeah, nah, it doesn't end well. Yeah.
And they're saying like, why do you need to go to a supermarket that's more than 15 minutes away? So you, we've got one here within your area. And if you do, we'll get you an AMPR camera. And you get yeah, fine. That's mad. Can yeah, you walk man. out of East Borough as well? Yeah, you can walk. Just, oh, you're you on about drive. drive. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, crazy. Fucking Hunger Games. So, so obviously, yeah, if you want to see someone, you've got to like book it in online. Or just pay the fine. You've got to pay the fine. So you've got to pay to see your friends now. It's, it's like mad. a congestion charge, I think. It's yeah. basically the same as congestion charge, but on the, like leaving your town yeah. instead of coming into it. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of mad sin. because we're going backwards. Like if you went back a hundred years, everything would be local to you anyway. Till Tesco yeah. came over and said, "Yo, we'll have everything in one place here." Now you've got to drive here, so it's yeah. kind of going back to how it was. But I mean, that wasn't. But but you know what's weird about it though is because we're connected like globally for Instagram. Like never before we wanted to leave our town the whole time, but also now you're not allowed, or at least that's the way yeah, it's going to go. You know, so it's going to be that you're teased the whole time. You see all this shit going on, on Instagram, but you can't do nothing. You can't even leave your town. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the carbon cap thing's mad as well. I don't know if any of you lot go on a lot of holidays, but they're saying like they're going to give people a certain amount of carbon yeah, they can emit. Go away, really? <laughs> yeah. So, if, for example, say you got a range, yeah, or well, you got a range, right? Yeah. So, say you're pumping out a lot of carbon, they're going to say, okay, you book this flight here. That's going to be your carbon cap now. I actually, uh, I actually buy more that. It's I, crazy. I actually quite rate that. As long as there's dispensation for people who are trying to push more green agendas like i've i bought an electric car just for the reason of like being on brand with my gym i've got like a, the gym's sort of label is being sort of sustainable and we, we really push for that sort of green touch so as long as i get points back so to speak for, for having an electric car and a sustainable gym then I, it won't really bother me that probably is the way to go though but i guess that's what the future holds my worry is this right so instead of even like uh what what i think is if electric cars are the answer the problem is, will it stop at electric cars? Because nothing's ever stopped anywhere. Like every single thing that's been a pushed agenda, what will happen is eventually when everyone's on electric cars, they say, right, electric's doing a lot of damage. We need to get people out of cars. And in the end, we'll just be carless. That's what I think. But is that a bad thing? Like, is it is it bad? Like, you see what the fu- all these futuristic films when they got those like tubes and mad shuttles, like, and you get places it. like that. And <laughs> like, I went, to, I went to I went to Dubai not longer, and they're trying to build that. Or maybe it's in Abu Dhabi. Where, yeah, horse and car. No, I, can, I can ride horses. <laughs> yeah, but no. But, but I, I seen that thing in Abu Dhabi where they're gonna have like a private tram and and the the ra- the monorail is it all, all the way through the city and right. Yeah. Like I, I think that's I think that's probably better for the environment and it makes more sense. I think it was Elon Musk it said we're the only um humans in general the only people who are three-dimensional that travel in 2d so we only go like that way you know as opposed to being able to go like up and over things down underneath do you know what i mean like ants yeah yeah, ants, yeah. they go wherever they want really up, but up the walls and that i yeah, love the that's, idea that's what he said he was like we need to start building like underground tunnels and stuff that's why we've got so much traffic that's why there's so much pollution and i think all that's sick but my worry is that it gets into the hands of people who use that agenda for different you know what i mean but bruv you're 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 a prisoner of the state in every sense anyway like what you can't we can't really change that there's people who are going to make those decisions whether you like it or not you're right you know you're mean? right yeah unless we all start rioting and going crazy but <laughs> I, we might probably, have to they probably got i'm not involved in this well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the problem is yeah like for example this you less thing yeah like it's it's all good saving the environment this that and the other but who does it target? Like poor people. You know what I mean? People who are at the bottom already. Now they've mm. got to pay nine quid to enter the town centre. Like if you do that every day, you know, that's like 300 quid a month for a normal person who's struggling already, like cost of living crisis. It's crazy. Let's bang it? a ULES charge on. You know yeah, what I mean? So they have to buy a new motor. Yeah, which they can't afford. Now yeah. what? Like that person's got a lower now quality of life. Now they're going to Now they're going to pay more money back on the finance. Yeah, exactly. Vicious circle. That's crazy. And yeah. then the other, the other thing is, is EV really really efficient because if you go to Congo you see all these poor African people like kids digging out um, stuff like yeah yeah, out the ground and they're like getting killed they're getting cancer they're getting enslaved all these things and it takes like seven because it takes so much carbon to get the the, uh, cobble out of the ground and everything else to process it all these other things make the batteries it takes seven times longer for you to pay back the carbon footprint from an EV I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard this, but do you not think that may be just a bit more propaganda as opposed to... For, I, I don't know. I'm asking the question. Yeah. I think whatever you do, obviously there's people who are going to be pro-normal cars and then people who are pro-EV. And the people who are pro-EV are going to say EVs are way better, whereas people who are pro-car are going to say EVs are seven times yeah. worse. You know what I mean? I never know whether I'm coming or going. I heard a quote, right? And this makes sense, is that I think we'd all agree, like, the banks are at least... They know everything that's going on in terms... They're going to be with the powers that be. So if they're saying that the waters will rise... Why are banks loaning twenty million pounds to houses in at water level in central London? They don't think the water's going to rise. They keep telling us that we're going to be underwater in ten years. Why are they giving twenty year mortgages for twenty million, forty million quid? And why is Bill Gates buying farmland at sea level? So they're telling us that us not going to electric is going to raise sea level, but they don't seem very concerned about it because they're not buying mountain ranges. So what's going on with yeah, these people true. who tell us this stuff? They're saying right, if water levels rise, we're going to be screwed. 
but they don't have any concern because they're giving out mortgages, no problem. And they're all at water level and they're the most valuable properties all at water level. And Bill Gates has bought how much farmland in the last year? I don't know. The largest uh, farmland in America right now. And so what's he bought? Sea. By his argument. Just bought everything. Like, but, I mean, he literally <laughs> he's bought ocean. control the food supply. In a By his argument, he's bought ocean. Yeah. He's, so what, what do you want the ocean for? He didn't think it's going to be ocean. And that's what I think. I think that we're being sold a rig. Up until the 90s, they said that it was going to be a big freeze. And then they changed lanes because we were getting warmer and said it's going to be a, <laughs> uh, we're going to overflow. And we were going to be overflowed by 2000, then 2010. And now 2023, I don't see much. And I yeah, think they just I, create I these clear. things just for new laws and how to make money. Yeah, <laughs> it's all, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Though it's all like we're all weighing over our head to think we actually got the answer. Like no one knows what's gonna happen. You're, you know you're bang I mean? on as well. We can't we can't do much. What, we're gonna end up can, going. Yeah. Getting what slaved. can we actually control? Do you know what I mean, that's, I stopped like sort of conspiring about all that stuff a long time ago when I realised. I cannot have any impact. I can try and recycle more, be a bit greener and stuff. Brilliant. But do I ultimately have the keys to what's going to change the world? No, of course I don't. Bro, you know, I've done the same thing recently. You know, I stopped listening to all this stuff because I thought, I'm just going to, the basics, I'm going to push back into CBDC, like stupid shit if they try and take my rights. But other than that, I just go down a dark hole and just listen to everyone. <laughs> everyone goes down a dark hole. It's yeah. just, just it's yeah, interesting, it, isn't it? It yeah. spices everything up. A lot of it's true, but when you can't do something about it, there's no point on no. worrying about it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly, man. Because we're all going to be in the same boat. You know what I mean? In worst case scenario, we just leave this country. Like, Whether if you're quick enough to level respond. Level yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll all be hanging out in Dubai sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? That's it's, where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, it, me seems, too. it seems that like everyone that I know is doing well and kind of woke to this stuff going on, like all these extra laws, this, that, and ever. Like Everyone wants to move to Dubai now. You know what I mean? But then I went, I went, I went to Dubai and someone I know lived out there and he's moving back now. He says the air purity, the purity of the air. But then again, it's an app and it could be lying to us. So he said that like it was ranked 180 seconds or something for places to live in terms of purity of the air. Out there. That's probably yeah. right. But and like the we, other were, we, were, we were in a high rise like having food and I literally couldn't see like four buildings away. So I was <laughs> really? Like, Jeez, maybe that is true. That's because of the heat though, isn't it? Obviously heat traps it all in. And it's obviously loads of dust like from, yeah. like, from sand and stuff. I don't we know. That but then, that's what I mean. Like I believe that as soon as I heard it and then I thought a bit more uh, constructively about it and I was like, geez, maybe there's actually a few other things going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah sand. Yeah. Like you said, sand, heat, all that stuff. Mm. But they only have petrols over there. There's no diesels. So, you know, you don't get the dirty diesel fumes. Mm. Petrol's kind of clean when it burns. About 10 years ago, we were in China. It's so smoggy that you literally oh, had like man. black in your nose. Do you remember that? Serious. Yeah. yeah. Well, why China's actually, the worst. Why is it like that in China? Like, why is it so everything? Yeah, yeah everyone's just got masks think about everything on this I table, never really read but... up into it. You ever gone over there when you've been like, doing? Nah. nah, I haven't been trying to. Nah, it's crazy out there. You literally go out for a day, you come back, and you'll have like black snot, like dry yes. black yes. snot. That yeah, you'll, if you, even if you just get some phlegm up, it'll be like black. Serious? Yeah, we went. We went That's to Guangzhou, crazy. where obviously all the factories are. The traffic's crazy. Like, how far was the exhibition? Like a mile, and it took us like an yeah, hour to get there. So many cars. Really? You got like six lane motorways, and everyone's just sat there like. With cigarettes, all sat there like lane and lane and lane, and it's just crazy pollution. Is it pollution. a cool place but, though? It's sick, yeah. Within, yeah. Re- within reason, obviously, morally it's questionable Scary. sometimes. Scary, yeah. yeah. I don't know how like up for going back I'd be because of like the way <laughs> everything's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, but in terms of like, <laughs> in terms of actually like see it, if you go there and you don't have to worry, like I think it's a cool place to see. See like a different way of living, yeah. Like yeah. very industrious. Everyone is just like on it, working nonstop, you know? I find that a lot about the, the Asia in general. Um, that sort of part of the world. Yeah, whereabouts in Asia have you been? Japan. Oh, sick. Uh, What's that uh, like? Uh, yeah, incredible. Every, very work driven. So there's one day a week, or maybe it might be what, every single evening, but you walk down this place in Tokyo and all the people are in business suits, like falling over, and there's a job over there to pick people up, drunk people off the street and <laughs> take them home. Because they work so hard, so relentlessly every single day of the week, it's almost like encouraged to have a blowout. At the yeah, end I heard week. my yeah. friend said the same thing, that they go out and get drunk after like every day of work because they work it might real be hard. Every day, they, yeah. yeah. But I, we were in the business district for the World Cup in 2019. It was, it was at the time, cause I was, I was 20, 24 then, I think, turning 25, and I didn't really appreciate it for what it was. I was like, fuck, I'm in Japan, like I should be making the most of it. I went to like a robot show and all sorts, of, like, there's crazy stuff like that. It is a oh, sick, sick place. Do you eat a lot so, of sushi? So different to the West. I love sushi, so yeah, I eat loads, but. Do you have any mad sushi? Was it different to here? Yeah, so I, I, again, what we said earlier about speaking about sushi and that. So on my phone, all I get is like cooking stuff, and it's always sushi, and because it's all I speak about. Yeah, yeah. as, as you probably <laughs> realised by now. And yeah. I, I didn't have any like the live sushi and stuff, but that um, I tried. What did I try? 
scallop nigiri. What do you mean live sushi? Well, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know when you said food, you, start, like, you touch his belly like yeah. he's missing well, something. Maybe there. Funny. <laughs> Have you not seen the live sushi? That was it. It's still like, So like, you know when you cut like a snake's head off, it moves and yeah. stuff. Like it's the same with like, octopus tentacles and stuff until you cook them. So they eat like live what, octopus. And... They're a sick bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, never, I, I never had it, but like, they love it. They put soy sauce on it and they... Yeah, I've seen videos on Insta where people are literally getting like an animal... Chucking in the oil and then eating it while it's still like moving, it's mad. That, that's what I mean. Yeah. Food wise, over there, they got some absolutely beautiful food, but there's some questionable stuff. But this, this is again, this is just us, the way we see it in the yeah, West. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They think it's yeah. incredible. We're in so. China, me and Shiz. We came back from the Canton Fair, which is some big like exhibition in Guangzhou, and we turned up and we were speaking to this supplier about HDMI cables, and he was like trying to win our oh, affection. Man. He was like, um, this is a special piece of the dish and it was the eyeball and we had to do it out of respect and like they kind of push it to me like Shiz and Rob the guys <laughs> with like yeah. and I did it and I ate this like big eyeball like this and there's a grain in it and I had to be like yeah it's very nice my friend just <laughs> yeah. nasty yeah. Right? I, heard it, I heard it pop yeah, and his face was like <laughs> scrunched oh, up and he's going man. like this and I the guy draw, yeah, I draw the line you want to go to my Nantes and St Paul's that's every, that's every week on this show <laughs> yeah, I, I used to have to sit at the table for, for about four hours till I'd eat it and she'd say you couldn't leave my well, dad would come and rescue me no I never ate it for <laughs> every week she'd do it it's just a fish eye like well you didn't chuck it under the table no that's why you do as a kid just like that. hide it oh, wow. <laughs> Trust me, she would have pat me down if I did that. She knows. <laughs> is it because oh, of like the um the vitamins and nutrients? And I don't know. I've never asked. I've never yeah. asked this day. I try. I don't. I try not to go there as much. <laughs> in um, <laughs> in, uh, in rugby, there's like a big uh, South sort of South Sea Pacific Islander culture, and uh, we play with a lot of these like huge Polynesian boys, like Tongans, Samoans, Fijians, and that, and they're like the maddest athletes you've ever seen in your life. Don't touch the gym. Bench two hundred kilo. Really? Match. Yes, Crazy. mate. Like you'll never see anything Mad. like it. They are made of absolute titanium like but they don't touch weights it's crazy <sighs> yeah it's, it's it's berserk well they say they don't touch weights but who knows they could be smashing gym when they get home I, yeah. you don't know do you but what they eat is like pretty wild like what i think is pretty wild but then i lived with um someone called jack lamb who's samoan a huge like one of the hardest hitters i've ever played with i live with him and he made me eat like the sort of same stuff he like gained 20 kilo in a year yeah, did you really what was he eating? to be fair there weight. was a lot of room to grow i was quite skinny when i was sort of growing up quite he's lean, never man. been skinny <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he has well, never went, been I, skinny I went, I went from 100, yeah. I went from 100 <laughs> kilo to 121 yeah, talking 100 wow. kilo that's, that's not enough. even being shits together yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? but yeah like the stuff, yeah. The stuff he eats is just like it's a high pork diet and loads of fish loads of oh it's mad and they got this thing called taro which is like a root vegetable that grows on the island mad is that like that pinky thing nice no, white um and they like they boil it sometimes in like coconut milk and stuff it's it's quite tasty but it's it's just like the most dense i guess as a vegetable that i've ever eaten and you eat that and you're a kilo ever you look at it you get a kilo ever you just like you know <laughs> yeah, you, you, get that. you get that in eastern yeah. Taro, yeah was that like cassava is that the same thing? Cassava is like a white thing. And it's like mad dense in carbs. But it's Probably, like, yeah. But kind of clean. Yeah. Grows no underground. Fat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a bit, it's like a yam. It's described as yeah. a yam, yeah. Mad. But they eat that and they're like literally ironically yeah, I've, I've seen these guys out before. I saw a group yeah, of them big, and they're yeah, massive. Yeah, they're they're enormous, huge, man. Big. And they're such nice people as well. Huge, but so kind and real good people. So was when you were playing in Leicester, was it? Nah, well, I played with a lot of them at Leicester. Big uh, contingent. The two Langies, like a very popular family in Leicester yeah. uh, they're incredible yeah <laughs> man. Um, and then in Bristol as well over the past few years we've had some like proper real good Samoans yeah ah nice nice 